Hi everybody, welcome to Brolas on Couch with myself, Helly Gray. I am the owner and CEO of Evolve and Succeed with the glasses. And what I'm gonna talk about today with you is that something that happens that a lot of people don't talk about, which is breaking up with your clients is hard to do. And is sometimes a necessity for both you and for both them to be successful. But it sucks and a lot of people overthink it and there's a lot of emotions involved when it comes to breaking up with the client because you're like, uh, I need the money or like I feel so bad about what's happened. So there's a lot of stuff that you need to take into account and this is a really easy way for you to break up with them. If it's your fault, if it's their fault, if it's a mutual breakup, which I know seems like not possible, but it totally is possible. So let's talk about that because that's something that's really important that I want you to think about is if you prepare mentally for it now, you're going to be able to deal with it much easier when it happens. But until that happens, what you need to do is start thinking about like, what am I going to do in this worst case scenario? How am I going to break up with my clients or how am I going to deal with their breakup? So first off, what I want you to do is make sure that you go and join this really great challenge that a lot of people have been loving online about how to be booked out and the five things that usually stop you from being booked out and the five things that are usually getting in your own way when it comes to having months of clients booked in advance because that's really, really important for you as someone who's a designer, a VA, a coach to have those months of clients booked in advance so that you can consistently make an income and that way you can stay, you know, self-employed instead of having to go back to the day job. So I highly recommend it. Go sign up. It's over at, uh, bebookedout.com forward slash challenge and it is starting on Monday. Okay, so let's talk about this because this is something that everybody has to encounter when they are working for themselves and when they are dealing with this because what happens is we're like, oh, we've got clients, this is awesome. And then we're like, holy shit, being in a client relationship is so much harder than I thought it would be and there's so many emotions and what am I gonna do? So what happens is that a Client breakups are totally sad, they're scary, they're stressful, okay, but it's a, it's a part of your service-based business, okay, especially if you're relying on referrals and marketing, you need to make sure that you are prepared for this worst case scenario, which is that you have to break up with your clients, okay, or they have to break up with you. So let's talk a bit about why client breakups happen and why those feelings are holding you back, okay? Client breakups happen because your marketing has mismarketed you or mismarketed who you can work with and therefore it is an example of how you need to update your marketing and stat because what happens is that a lot of people have on there like the work with anybody or every service-based provider or entrepreneurs and so they get that in their business and like actually I only want to work with you know designers I only want to work with coaches I only want to work with whatever and what happens is that once you figured that out then you should definitely be talking just to them okay and so that's something that's really really crucial that a lot of people overlook is that no you don't want to work with everybody on the internet and no you don't want to have that in your marketing because what happens is that those people will come in and your marketing is not being a good enough bouncer okay at the end of the day your marketing is your bouncer and it's also your maitre d okay and make sure the right people will come in and the wrong people will be pushed away so the first thing i would say is Client breakups happen because you have marketed yourself incorrectly, okay? You have told the, the wrong people that you will help them, and so they have come in, okay? The other thing that can happen as well is client breakups can happen because you haven't set expectations into place. So instead of being like, hey, I don't take calls at 4 a.m. on a Saturday, you've been like, you can call me unlimited number of hours, unlimited number of emails. If you didn't watch last week's episode about how the unlimited thing is screwing you over, go and watch that next because that is something when it comes to your business online, you should not be offering and it will create a client breakup because they'll be like, hey, you said I could have unlimited emails and now you're telling me that the 20 emails I sent you this week was inappropriate, I'm unhappy, I want my money back. So what happens with a lot of people is that they have incorrect expectations set up in their actual intake for their clients, okay? They're saying they're gonna provide everything when in reality that's not feasible and that's not realistic, and so they really need to be more straight up about what they can and cannot do, okay? The next thing might be that maybe you did not deliver what you needed to deliver, or the client is not doing their half of the relationship. Whatever's happening is that the work is not getting done on one or other sides. So. That sucks because if your client is not answering your emails about if they like your you know, first mock-up, if they're not answering your emails about like if they like the copy or not, if they haven't given you the data you need to actually do your job and do what you need to do, then you're stuck right now waiting for them to provide for you, okay? So again, part of that is setting up your client experience so that it is awesome and on point and you make sure that everybody gets their shit done well before you need it. But the next thing is maybe you didn't get your shit done on time and that's really, really crucial because if you have not gotten your shit done on time, 
of the course the client's going to be fucked off, okay? They're going to fucking, they want their shit done and they want it done on time. So it's really, really important that you understand that, sweet, it sucks if you've missed a deadline. It sucks if you fucked up. But at the same time, this is what happens when two people work together, okay? Or live together or marry each other. This is all the difficulties humans have when they are working with each other or um, interacting with each other. So what the best thing is to do, okay, is how to handle it and figure out how you want to handle it. So the three different types of client breakups, again, are your fault, the client's fault, both of your faults, okay? So what happens is that when it comes to these different types, your fault, you haven't delivered, okay? Or what you've delivered is shitty or miss, you misadvertised what you were doing. That sucks. You need to take that one on the chin and take it. Take it. Just take it. The next one is the client has fucked up. They haven't done the work. They're, they're totally high maintenance or they're just fucking insane or they just have weird expectations or they're just trying to weasel out of it. So there are douchebags on the internet. There's not that many, but there are a few out there, okay? So you might have, you might have got yourself a douche. That's totally okay. What happens is that this is, again, something that you need to be aware of and you need to update your marketing to fix it, okay? The last one is mutual. Maybe you're like, hey, look, you need somebody who's more into watercolors, uh, you know, specialist for this. You've just discovered, because you two are both like, we're on the same page. We know, what, you know, this is gonna work. The relationship's fine. We've talked about it. It seems like it's going the right direction. And then you're like, uh, both the client and I know she needs like a watercolor designer or she needs like a VA for SEO, not tech, or she needs a uh, coach who works in life stuff instead of business stuff. So at that point, both of you realize this and you're both like, oh, this sucks. We like each other so much, but we have to break up. Like we have to stop this. You need someone who's going to be a great person for you. You need an expert for this and I'm just not providing it for you. Like let's end it here and you move forward with somebody else. Okay. So those are the three different types of breakups. All of them, um, except for the mutual, of course, are kind of sucky, okay? It means that someone's been human and they haven't owned up to it and they haven't taken their responsibility, all right? So how you handle this, all right? How do you handle a client breakup? So first off, if you've fucked up, if you've been like not doing the work, I would say, first off, you have to own that to the client and you need to figure out what you're going to do to compensate. Do you give them a refund? Have you provided half of the work? Do you give them half a refund or do you just cancel, do you just cancel the agreement? What I found is that if you are, if you fucked up because maybe a life thing has happened, somebody that you care about is sick, you've gotten, you know, overwhelmed with work and you've just been avoiding it because you're just overwhelmed. Um, or if something's that's just like you as a human being have stopped showing up as awesome as you usually do, then what I would say is you can go to your client and be like, hey, you were right. I have fucked up. Here's what I'm going to do to make it right. I'm going to refund you the other half of your money, and then I'm going to give you a set of sessions that you can use in the future once this stuff has passed and once everything's sorted. Because right now, I, as a human being, I'm at my capacity, and I'm not showing up the way that I would love to for you. I'm not doing the work that I know I can do when I have a clear head, and I'm not distracted by all this life trouble that I have on my plate right now. The second thing you could do is say like, hey, I'm really sorry, you're right. Here's a refund, and here's somebody that I would recommend to work with you. I'm so sorry. This is not my usual quality of work. I just have some stuff going on right now that is definitely taking me down and I need to focus on that first. I'm sorry again. I hope we can work together in the future and I really appreciate your patience and understanding. Definitely always end on a positive. So you do not want to like say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and not give them a clear way forward and not give them like appreciation. It is a more effective technique for you to be like, thank you for your patience instead of being like, I'm sorry, I fucked this up all the time. So make sure to say like, I am sorry, because people want to hear that for you taking responsibility for fucking up. Offer a solution and then at the end say, thank you for your patience or thanks for taking a chance. Uh, thanks for, you know, bearing with me. Thanks for hitting me up about that. Thanks for, you know, whatever. So if you end on a positive, if you thank them, it's going to be really, really effective because they're going to have a positive association and it's going to make you seem really confident and really baller. So that increases your street cred. Do not avoid if you have fucked up because that will make the person even more angry, okay? Do not avoid. Avoiding will make the problem worse. I know that if you have like depression or anxiety, this is a tough one. I'm not a therapist. Go get a therapist. But if you are avoiding the problem, that person is going to get angrier and angrier every day, okay? Especially if they're new to your relationship and they're not sure what's going on. So the best thing to do is be like, hey, I know I haven't delivered. I'm so sorry. I'm just thinking about the best way forward for this. If you have any suggestions, let me know, okay? But I'm going, I'm working right now and figuring out how the best way is to serve you and how to fix this. So please bear with me. I just need a little bit of time to think, think about it. Um, 
that way they at least know that you're considering it and that you have seen their concerns that you are prioritizing it, which is super, super important. Okay. Client, second type, client fucks up. They don't contact you. They've ghosted you. They've just gone and disappeared off the face of the earth. Okay. So the first thing I like to do is show as much compassion as you would want them to show you and say like, Hey, I'm worried about you. I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, I hope you haven't fallen down a well. Are you okay? Just let me know because I'm worried. So the first thing is to show concern for their well-being and who they are as a person. That usually elicits more of a response than being like, you know, you haven't answered my email in three days. Where are you? So show concern for them as a human being because they are probably experiencing something out of the ordinary and they might be troubled. They might be stuck. Um, that also opens up communication for like you showing concern and in valuing the relationship over the money, which is really, really important online. The second step, once they've answered or once they haven't answered, which I, you'll see a much higher response rate when you approach it that way with the first email is saying like, Hey, I haven't heard from you. You know, this is where we're currently at. And you could be like, Hey, I've delivered your logo and you've paid me half the money. So what's happening now is that I'm going to give you three days to answer. If you don't answer, then what's going to happen is I have to put the other half into collections because you had a specific spot booked. I made sure to make time for it for this project and you're not getting back to me per our contract. Definitely make sure that you have in your contract that if they do not get back to you by a certain time that you are allowed to take these steps. Okay. So get a lawyer involved, figure out the process you want. If somebody ghosts you, if they just stop contacting you and they've only paid half the amount that they owe you. So figure out what you want that to look like and make sure you're protected legally. I'm not the best person for that for the legal matters, but you can go and talk to a lawyer and get that sorted and inside of your contract. So then I would say, okay, great. Now that they know where you are at, now that you've shown concern for them as a human being, you've told them like legit, this is what's going to happen in three days. So you need to contact me and we need to wrap this up. Okay. If they do not answer within your time frame, and they clearly know what the circumstances are and they clearly know how to, what's going to happen if they do not contact you, now is the time to take that next step. So you have to take them to small claims. You have to take them to the debt collector, something like that. Okay. So at the end of the day, a breakup is fine, but basically if they have ghosted you, you need to follow a step where you still get paid because you still put the money in. Okay. Now, if a client is a douche, how do you break up with them? That's a tougher one because douches usually email you back and they are very vocal about what they think. So when you are trying to team a troll, as I like to think of it, you are going to have a whole bunch of emotions coming into your inbox. And I do not like that. So if you're like me and you're like, I don't want to have drama. I just want to get this shit done. Then the uh, douche of the client is going to be a lot harder for you to deal with. So what I would do is take a look at your contract. Again, you want to protect yourself legally so that you can take yourself out of these situations quite easily, but be like, Hey, at this point, this is not working out. Uh, I'm not going to be able to provide this service for you any longer. Here is who I would recommend instead. If you have frenemies, you would prefer to recommend to them, uh, or people who you think would just be able to better handle a higher maintenance client or might mesh better. Because at the end of the day, if a client that you perceive as a douche might just be someone who's like type A and you prefer to work with type B sorts of peeps. So again, you would want to update your marketing and make sure that sort of person doesn't come into your business again. But you could also give them the opportunity of working with someone that you know who might want to work with them. So it's somebody, sometimes it's a personality clash or like, a, you know, it's just a personality clash. So that's not a big deal, but it's giving you the douche client experience. So recommend them across and be like, hey, I would love to do this with you. Really, I would. But unfortunately, I'm finding that I'm not able to provide the sort of service that you're looking for. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to refund your money. I'm going to cancel the payments. I'm going to let you out of this agreement. And I would recommend instead working with this person because they probably are going to be able to deliver, you know, the product or service or help you better than I can. Okay. It's been fun. See you later. Because at the end of the day, if you leave this person in your inbox, if you leave them absorbing all your time, I know cash is something that you're probably thinking about all the freaking time. It's going to end up taking away too many resources. And unfortunately at the end of the day, you only have a limited amount of resources as the only person working in your business. So resources is time, uh, energy, money. You do not have those things to devote to one client to try and make it work. Okay. So what you need to do is say, okay, great. Now I need to look for a new client. You should have a wait list full of clients waiting for you. If you don't go join this challenge, cause it'll start helping you with that. And then what I want you to do is say, okay, like I really need to get out of this relationship. At the end of the day, you only have so much responsibility to your clients. Like you can't 
make them do the work. You can't make them show up. You, you know, you can only do your own work and make sure that you show up. So you don't have to take responsibility for that. And especially if they are not providing like the copy that you need to design their website, if they're not, you know, answering your emails in a timely manner, you need to figure out either a solution or you need to break up with them. Okay. So it's just like dating. You can't be on the fence. If they're just not that into you, you need to get out now. All right. The last one is the mutual breakup. This is much easier because it's on both of your minds. You're like, Hey, I like you as a human being, but I noticed that, you know, you came in to do life coach work, but you really need a business coach. And I'm sure you're feeling this as well. So, or I'm sure you've noticed this as well. So let's get you out of this contract and into a business coach's contract. Here are three that I've already alerted to say like, Hey, she wants to talk to you. Like she needs to talk to you about this and this and this. This is how I recommend going forward, okay? And they'll contact you and they'll help you with the next step because I really want you to succeed and you, at this point, you don't need these services, you need these services. And so that usually is a really easy conversation to have and the person will really appreciate it because you have taken the hard choice of saying like, do not give me any more money because it's not helping you. So what I wanna do is help you with moving forward to accomplish your dream or your goal or whatever you're trying to accomplish, let's get you into a better situation and better relationship. And so with that one, you just have to be like, acknowledge what already is existing, which is the data points to this being a mismatch of services and needs. Let's get you compatible. Like let's get you with somebody else who's compatible. And both of you are doing, or both of you are already aware of the fact that this is not working and it's not meshing. Okay. So it's really not that hard. And it's probably the easiest one because you're like, I care about you. You need something different. Let's get you into that right away. Okay. So that's how you handle client breakups. That's how you handle the difficulty of it. It is also one of my favorite ways to see if a client, what kind of business somebody has when shit goes down on their side, on their client side, on anybody's side, that is when you know uh, what a client or what a business is actually made of, because it is easy for a business to be like, Hey, we are an awesome company until shit goes down. Once shit goes down, then you can actually know what a business is like on the inside because their, you know, compassion or empathy or ability to take responsibility responsibilities for fuck ups is really the like the telltale sign of a awesome stellar like business online. So you would definitely rise above the rest if you did that instead of doing what a lot of people do, which is just avoid it or not acknowledge it. Um, so what I would recommend is go and click the link in the description. If you have found that you want to work with clients and you're really excited about it and this doesn't put you off because let's be honest, uh, working with clients is also one of the best fucking things in the world. So they are amazing people. You're going to help them get amazing results. It's going to be such a good relationship. It just that occasionally you have to have these hard conversations when you're a business owner. It doesn't matter what kind of business you own. You are always going to have hard conversations. So jump into the be booked out five day challenge. It starts on Monday and let's get you booked out with amazing clients. All right. Thanks for being here. I'm Hallie Gray from Evolve and Succeed and I'll see you next week on Brawl.